Ken, welcome to the show. Hey, Gavin, how's it going? We're here today talking about your film, Stay, which is available on Reveal Now. Now, I, I had the pleasure of seeing this film ahead of uh, its debut on Reveal. Uh, both of us, uh, you know, full disclosure to everybody out there, we're in the same city. We're yep. uh, two of a handful of filmmakers in Windsor, Ontario, Canada, that have uh, continued beyond their first project. Many people like to make a project and then quit, but... You've been at it for years. I've been at it for years and, and actually had a chance to collaborate in the last week or so, which is uh, the first of let, let's hope as many. But anyways, back to Absolutely. stay. Put stay in your own words for the audience. What's uh, if they're if they're about to go click on something to watch? What is stay about and why should they watch this one? Well, it's kind of a split half horror, half comedy. And uh, it was inspired by. At the very beginning of the pandemic, the, the big push was the lockdown and stay home. So it's kind of a, a play on that. And at the time, it seems funny to look back now, a few years later, no one knew if this was going to last a week, a month, a mm -hmm. few months. Who knew, right? So we were playing with the idea of, oh, if you're locked in your home for days on end, you start to go a little crazy, stir crazy, cabin fever sets in. So uh, we started on in like a horror kind of tone and then shift over to comedy. And it's got a really wonderful ending that we don't want to spoil that you have to watch to get to. But I, I think, you know, you, you come from a long line of, of shooting under restrictions as most of us indie filmmakers do. There's never enough money, never enough time, never enough crew. So I feel like you were perfectly suited to be creating during the pandemic because you're already used to sort of building a lot out of nothing. And I think one of your strengths is each one of your projects that I've seen always has four to five, like let's call them like feature camera shots or style elements to them. Uh, do you look for that when If you're shooting, you know, you're, you shot this entire thing in a house. Are you always looking, yep. okay, it, it's a house. What do I do to make that more exciting? How do I visually bring that story out? Yeah, luckily in this case, it was my own house. So before I even got the camera rolling, I was able to walk around the day before and kind of, okay, what, what does it look like from this angle? What does it look like from that angle? But certainly already had some ideas of shots so that would either be a good visual gag or a kind of funny, scary moment or something like that. But uh, yeah, it uh, Heath, who's in the film, and I have collaborated a lot of, mm -hmm. on these 48 hour flick fest, like you mentioned with extreme limitations and time yeah. crunches. So it, it had been years of doing that and we wanted to do a little bit more. And so when all these restrictions hit, we kind of felt, Oh, we have to get this film out now while it's topical. Uh, and so even without restrictions, we were doing this all on our own. We still shot everything in one day and got it done in about a week. So it was just that mindset of, you know, work as fast as you can and get it done while, you know, everyone's got their energy towards it. Well, th there's no reason to linger time. Time is money on a set. So I, I think you, you are, you are better suited moving forward into, into features and whatnot. If, if you keep that attitude, a lot of people tend to just get more relaxed. Oh, there's more crew. There's more, there's more budget. We'll just, we'll just take our time. But um, I, I, th I think you also, um, you know, having, having watched you work this week, like you tend to lose momentum and lose energy on a set too, if you, if you're going too long between setups. And I think for the actors, they mm -hmm. greatly appreciate being able to get to that next take or that next setup faster to, to stay in character and keep the momentum going. Yeah. Every second you can save, you know, making a decision faster or knowing what your next move is just keeps the momentum going and keeps everyone smiling. Where did the, where did the idea for this come from? Ob obviously, the lockdown portion of it, but the, the we have to yeah. talk around what the surprise is. But what what sort of inspired that? Well, uh, Heath and I got together, and we didn't know what we wanted to make, but we knew we wanted to make something. And you know, the I, certain ideas got thrown around. Like, okay, well, that would without giving away the surprise, we kind of we started with what the surprise was, and then worked backwards from there to figure out how we could create an interesting story around that. Um, and the whole thing kind of 
fell into place, then it was just a matter of coming up with different gags and situations. Once we figured out there's going to be two people kind of going crazy, suffering cabin fever. Okay. We knew we wanted it to ramp up. What's next? What's next? What's next? What are people doing to stay busy? They're playing board games. Okay. Well, that can only last so long. Then next, next, next. And yeah, it just goes to madness. Was that Heath's uh, COVID beard or did he, or was that just his hair, his facial hair at the time? He tends to keep some <laughs> version of facial hair I see in all of your projects together. He, but... he certainly has an interesting look as far as his facial hair goes. You never know one month to the next if he's going to be clean shaving, a beard, a lumberjack, if he's going to have some sort of renaissance handlebar mustache. Uh, I always ask him to send me a current photo before we get going on anything just to see what his current look is. Well, ag again, without spoilers, this beard serves his character very well. When you, when you learn, when you yes. learn the, the reveal at the end, how, how did you get started in, in filmmaking? What was your path? Did you attend film school? Uh, no, I didn't intend, uh, to attend film school in high school. Uh, one of my best friends, Corey Bissett, and I decided we were going to make a film. We were completely naive. We had no idea what we were getting ourselves into. And so we embarked on making a feature film as our first go at anything. And it was a werewolf movie called Moonlight Sonata. Uh, we did finish it. It took us three years, but it premiered at WIF in 2010. And we learned a ton doing that. And since then, we've been doing a lot of short films uh music videos all kinds of stuff like that so your path the path is just learning as you go are are you just diving uh, in yeah are you the mindset like myself where nowadays anything that i want to learn somebody's got a youtube lesson on how to do that effect or how to do that oh repeat? yeah yep. <laughs> i i tend to even with youtube you have to police yourself because you could fall down these holes of <laughs> learning is great and you're picking up all these tricks but you have to just get out there and do it too Fair. So, yeah. Cause the knowledge in your head is nothing until you actually practically try to apply it. I, I fully agree absolutely. with that. Um, to, there, there are talkers and there are doers. And as, you know, as, as the years go by, I try to eliminate the talkers and only work with the doers because there's just not enough time that everybody has a great idea. Not everybody has the, the passion, the energy or the ability to execute that idea. And I, I find that it just to be wasteful to do anything else, but you're right. You, you could sit around and theorize about how you're going to shoot something forever, but until you actually take the camera out and, and put those techniques you're watching on YouTube to practice, uh, you also work mm -hmm. pretty heavily in the commercial world. Do you find yeah. that that allows you to practice different styles that you can fold back into your filmmaking? Oh, there's certainly a lot to learn there, a lot of technical stuff to learn for sure. So when it comes time to get onto a set, having that technical experience of doing all the corporate work, whether it's a good understanding of how the gear works or just on the management side of uh, assembling a crew and actually pulling something off, it definitely helps. You know, there's no shortage of difficult clients in the commercial world and managing all kinds of different people's expectations and thoughts and building all those skills certainly helps moving forward with any project. When you're, uh, I find a lot of your projects uh, tend to have their, they're very serious in nature, have some sort of like horror or, or thriller or crime element to them, but then also have this whimsical sense, sense of humor, e even amongst those, those elements what what are your sort of inspirations like filmmaker wise or films that that you feel like um you know not not that you're emulating because you are your own filmmaker but what what are the inspirations that, that you you can tell and see seep into your own work well i i certainly love anything that's entertaining first and foremost you know uh as long as i'm having fun watching something i'm going to enjoy it so mm -hmm. whether that's sam raimi back in the evil dead days or something like Guy Ritchie. More recently, I've been really into Edgar Wright and everything he's doing. Uh, even like James Cameron, all that stuff is so entertaining and fun to watch. You're just like, okay, yeah, I want to do stuff like that. I just remember like even in True Lies, you know, a serious spy thriller from James Cameron, there's so much heart and humor, but there's just shots where 
uh, Schwarzenegger's landing a Harrier jet and the camera's tracking yeah. down and all of a sudden a no parking sign like like comes into comes into play where he lands the Harrier jet and you're like just just that little touch of 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 comedy wasn't necessary you know right. doesn't doesn't change the story of the movie but it just makes it so much more fun and exactly. enjoyable if you can have those moments throughout something have you had a chance to see everything everywhere all at once yet you must be a fan of oh the my band. god i'm i'm very excited too i have not yet seen it but i've seen i, I saw it yesterday trailers. no spoilers yeah. i i had not watched the trailer i had not seen the poster i went in completely blind it blew okay. my mind and i think oh wow having been able to work on your set you know this this past week and and understand your stylings a bit better i think this movie was made specifically for you i think you will enjoy oh, wow. it more than okay. anybody that uh it's 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 fantastic but but yeah speaking speaking of directors that uh have, have a unique style that the daniels are are up there a hundred percent when you when you are filming in your own home a place that you know so so well and spend spend so much time in but what do you have to do to to make it interesting? Because you you could you could end up mm. just making it very still and, and very static shots and just using the space as as it's lit every day. How much work does it take to sort of make it interesting enough for you to film in there? Oh well, it's certainly first of all just cleaning, <laughs> <laughs> cleaning everything up, and then getting. Uh, the actors in front of the camera and then combining that with some interesting camera techniques or moves certainly goes a long way. Uh, I was able to play around with a little bit of motion control in one of the shots towards the beginning of the film. It was a, a trick that I, I thought was possible. I wasn't sure. I thought hey, it's a good chance to try it out. And uh, yeah, I think it, it worked out pretty well. Um, that Which part did you use motion control on? That's the one, it's the right before it, it, sw it swaps over to comedy. You'll, there's a big sweeping uh, panning shot where there's multiples of the two actors in different positions. So that's literally rotating the camera and in exactly the same path and then stitching those takes together to, to have the yeah, same I actor appear multiple times. Yep. We did six or seven takes of that where the actors were doing different actions every time and then was able to layer all those shots together and yeah, patch them together. So it looks like it's pretty they're... incredible that, that I feel like that the, the indie film market has all of these tools. Cause you know, famously motion control oh, yeah. was created for star Wars so that they could, mm -hmm. um, so that they could do fancy things like this. Like I happen to have a single frame of star Wars film here from the oh, actual beautiful. movies of blue screen anyways. But you know, it, it, it motion control was invented for that to do multiple passes of different models at the same speed. So they could combine them together. And yeah. now any filmmaker for a very reasonable price can have a, a motion control head for, for a slider or, or a tripod. Absolutely. And in I that just, case, I just used a Ronin S gimbal. They had, it has a mode in there and was able to pull it off just with that. That see that's even more amazing that, that a tool you wouldn't think about necessarily using for motion control you're able mm -hmm. to get a second a, an entirely second use out of it and I just I think that's the real thing a lot of filmmakers you know it, it's very difficult to get off the couch and actually go pursue your dream and, and make a movie um, you know all the tools are there very affordable now there's there's nothing stopping anybody from making their movie outside yep. of the technical side, what's your best piece of advice for up and coming filmmakers uh, to help them get their first project made? Oh, uh, just don't get in your own way, get out there and do it. Whether that's a camera you can borrow, your phone is certainly good enough. Uh, put the time in, don't get distracted and just do what you want to do. Uh, if making movies is what you want to do, you just got to get out there and do it. There's no better way to learn than doing it. And you're not going to accomplish it unless you do it. Was there a scene in creating stay that, that was the most challenging? Um, well, other than uh, the motion control shot I mentioned wasn't necessarily challenging. I can't really say without, it would probably be the final shot. Uh, and don't want to give away the ending. No, but... please, please don't. Everybody, exactly. everybody needs to go watch the film and, and, and enjoy the reveal for itself. Cause it, it's really interesting. You're watching the film and you're like, 
these characters are pretty quirky uh, they're not getting any less quirky and and then when it all clicks at the end you're like okay and it, and it's worth a rewatch the first time you sent it to me i i did go back immediately and skim through and watch parts of it again because i was like okay now this all makes a heck of a lot more sense and, and it's Absolutely. crystal clear to me what's what's happening I was uh, really enjoying uh, sending it to people and having people watch it and getting their feedback of when they guessed or clued in on what the the trick would be at the end. If they was they didn't pick up on it till right to the end, some people picked up on it right away. You uh, you had me six yeah. sense. I didn't know that anybody was dead until the till the very end. Yeah, no, I, like I yeah, I didn't it I, it didn't click for me. I um. I, I, I like quirky characters and uh, I, I wouldn't expect any less from you having seen some of your other works. So it didn't, uh, it, it took me right till the end, which is, which is a great way to experience it. Awesome. What do you think? Are we going to see some, some more of your work put up here on reveal? Oh, absolutely. This is uh, such a great service and streaming platform. So it's awesome tool and a venue for filmmakers to show their work because that's why we make this stuff, right? We want people to see it. So the well, that, more people who can see uh, the stuff, the better. That's good because that means I'll be able to have uh, Heath on the show to talk about one of the other 47 projects that you two have created together. So <laughs> it's, it's good. It's good to have that muse to have that, that, uh, you know, soldier in the, in the trenches with you. That uh, I think every, Every mm -hmm. filmmaker has their their little band of sort of misfits, let's call them. You know, they, we're all the, an island of misfit toys trying to make our films. And uh, it, it's it's like, do you remember the scene in Shaun of the Dead when they're when they're walking by in, in a field and they see like a party of survivors that and everybody looks just like one of one of their team? Yes. Yeah. Um, every independent, yeah. Every every independent film set to me is like that where I can go visit and be like, Oh, that's my friend, Derek. That's, that's, you know, we, we all have our core group of people to help us get films made, uh, which, which I Absolutely. think is, is fascinating. Uh, and speaking of I, Shaun of the dead, I just picked up and finished uh, their new book by Edgar Wright called you've got red on you. It's all about the making of Shaun of the dead which okay. was his first feature. And it's a fantastic read. It, it takes you all through all the steps of, an indie filmmaker struggling to get his first feature made. Oh, I have to read that. I'm actually, yeah. I, I paused it before coming to interview you. I'm watching uh, the world's end for the first time. I somehow oh, missed it when it one. came out, but yeah, it, it's yeah. great so far. It's, it's wonderful. Yeah. And, and takes a very big twist about 30 minutes in that you don't, you yeah, don't absolutely. see coming at all. Uh, but that's all our time for today. Ken, thanks for joining us. Everybody at home reveal.net. It's free. You don't need a credit card. You can watch all these amazing short films, features, documentaries, animations. You just got to sign up. It's that easy. It's like any other streaming service, just a bunch of independent content that you might not have heard of, but likely will enjoy, including Stay by the man on my right, Ken Amlin. Thanks, Gavin. Thanks for having me. Awesome. We'll chat soon, I'm sure. Yep, absolutely.